speaks. We are in your presence. You have spoken your word, and there is someone here that you have positioned to bless today. And I know that person is myself, and every one of your children that are seated before you, and those that are on YouTube, and those that are on Facebook, and, and even on the Zoom. Lord, wherever we are positioned today, Lord, you will meet us at the point of our knees in the name of Jesus. King of all kings, we bow before you. Glorify yourself in our midst, in our lives, and in Jesus' palace, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. <clears throat> like I said, I said we want to share the word of God briefly, and it's titled, Position positioned for palace grace. That is, position yourself for palace grace. And I will start with a testimony. When Jesus Palace started, career-wise, I was far away from where I am right now. When Jesus Palace started, family-wise, I was far away from where I am right now. It is the glory of God. God is an amazing God. In the midst of these five years, God has made our two children to go into university. And this very year, both of them will be graduating. Position yourself. If you are listening to the word of God this morning, just position yourself. There is a grace that is in the house. And in this church, about nine doctors. We have a, about nine medical doctors in this church. And before these nine medical doctors came up, there was a program that we wanted to do in the church. We wanted to talk about our, our health, how to heal, eat very well and exercise and live a good life. And we were thinking, oh, we should look for somebody that is medically, you know, like a profession to talk about, not just a message that will blend knowledge with the truth. And we were like, okay, who are we going to invite? And myself and my husband, we just laughed. We said, very soon, no. God will bring doctors to this Jesus Palace, though. In less than three months, they started coming in. And in less than six months, we were, we were having about nine medical doctors. There is grace in the house. That is what I am talking about. Position yourself for palace grace. Let us open our Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 9. For your personal study, I will recommend that you start reading from verses 1 to 13. But because of our time, as I am giving this message, I will be taking the scripture randomly. So, and I will talk briefly about this message in three uh, ways, under three points. The number one point is, regardless of your condition, regardless of your condition, that is my number one point. And I will read from that second Samuel chapter nine. I will read verse one. David asked, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? For Jesus' sake, God is asking this morning, is there anybody sitting in this place that I can show kindness to for Jesus' sake? And I say, I am here. Regardless of your condition, let us go to verse 3. The king asked, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Siba answered, answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame both feet. Can you imagine? You are asking a question, you want to talk to somebody. And the next thing that the person is talking about is that, oh, this person is lame. This person is blind. This person doesn't have this qualification. 
This person is black. This person is a woman. This person is a, 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 is a single person. You know, the world has a way of labeling people with their situation, with their condition. But I want to tell you this morning, your condition will not matter in this matter. It is the king that is talking about you that is requesting your presence that will matter. And because you are still alive, he said, is there someone that is still alive in the household of Saul for Jonathan's sake so I can show him kindness? And because you are alive and you are a partaker of this message today, you will experience the kindness of the, the almighty God in the mighty name of Jesus. John chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. If you look at that scripture, it's talking about a, a man that has been beside a particular pool. The pool of Bethsaida. Uh, this sick person has been there for 38 years. Three, eight. 38 years. And he didn't get any help. But Jesus came and said, I want to help you. Do you know that I can help you? But what did that man said? He said, I have no one to help me. You know, a lot of us, when God wants to do something for us, we are looking at ourselves, or we are looking around, or we are looking, or, you know, everywhere except upward. And I want to encourage, uh, encourage you this morning. Look upward. Look to God. There is a God. This God is so real. There is a song that I love so much. It's sung by a lady called Anne. There is a God. There is a God. There is a God. How much proof do you need? There is a God. There is a God, there is a God, how much proof do you need? How much proof do you need? You just want to, you know, you, you want to see facts. You want to see evidence. Come to me after the service, come and ask me. And I will tell you about an 18 years old young lady that had no hope that had no future and rose up from a very remote end of the world one day, one morning, and packed her things and said, I'm going somewhere. Where I'm going to, I don't have an address. I don't know where I'm going to, but I am leaving this place because I don't belong to this place. And this is the lady standing before you. If you want to have proof of God, come to me. I will tell you a lot. Hallelujah. Regardless of your situation, regardless of your condition, the God that changes time and season is calling on you. He's asking of you. He said, where is Rura? Where is Gladys? Where is Princess? Where is my daughter? Where is Sarah? Where is, you know, put your name there. And as you answer, he will show you his kindness in the name of Jesus. Number two. Look around wherever you are. Not physically, spiritually. Spiritually, where are you? God is saying, come out of that place. Make haste today. Because immediately the king sent for Brother Murphy. I call him Brother Murphy. Murphy Boshet. He sent for him. And he came. Let us go to verse 7. I will read verse 7. Don't be afraid, David said. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness. For the sake of your father, Jonathan, I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. And you will always eat at my table. This is somebody that has been taken to a far remote place, hiding in Lovebah. 
if you read from verses one to that seven or to six, before you get to that seven, you will see where David, this brother Murphy, amen? Brother Murphy was there. He was alone. He was afraid. He was rejected. He was hiding. He was, he was depressed. His father was gone. His grandfather was gone. He was supposed to be a prince, but nobody knows him anymore. Death was hanging on his head. Because when a king became, become a king, he, you know, in those days, they wipe out the opposition. So he was in the opposition. That is why I ask you, look around spiritually, wherever you are now. Are you in opposition to the king? Come out of sin. Come out of rejection. Come out of bitterness. Come out of wherever you are that is in opposition to God. Come out of unforgiveness. Come out of hatred. Come out of fighting. Come to the king. He will turn your li life around. He will beautify you. He will show you his kindness. Come out of low deba. See, they even put the word low. Low deba. Even the, the bar is very depressive. Low and deba. Down, down. Wherever you think you are, the king is in the palace and he's looking for you. He's looking for you and he's calling on to you. He said, Come, make haste. It's not about your past. It's not about your grandfather anymore. It's not going to be about your father. It's not going to be about any situation you are in. For Jesus' sake, I will show you kindness. Hallelujah. You are coming out of obscurity. You are coming out of fear. You are coming out of that desert situation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will rain his blessing upon your career. You begin to flourish. In the name of Jesus, today, step out of your condition into your position. Number three, which is the final one, and I will soon round up, because I really want us to pray. And the pastor is still going to pray for us. At your service. That is my point number three. At your service. When Mephibosheth came, Brother Mephi came to the king, lame, crippled, probably not so elegant, not looking like a prince. But he came. You have to come. Come as you are. Don't make it up. Don't patch it up. Don't cover it. Be open to the king. You know, like when, Jesus, when, when God was giving us the mandate of this church, he gave us the word that was so, so heavy and so scary and so powerful. We were like, oh God, this is, this is unimaginable. We can't even comprehend it. He said, hey, you know, he said, imagine the palace of the kings of this world. When people come to the palace, to the high and mighty, the people that know how, you know, the people of timber and caliber, substances. When they bring their situation, when they get there, do they lie? Do they tell stories that are not real? Even some of them, they come, they can't even talk. They start crying. And the person will be saying, tell us, what do you want? And they will say, I need help. I need help. They will just come out the way they are. That is the way you should come out. Because God said to us, he said, as many that will come to this palace, that will tell him how they are, it will change their situation. The poor will become rich. The unsaved will be saved. The, you know, the vagabond will be rescued. The sick will be healed. And he said, I will, I will give prosperity to my people. This Jesus palace is going places. Jesus palace, we bless nations. So position for the palace grace. Mephibosheth came, verse 8, and he bowed down and said, what is your servant? that you should notice a dead dog like me. You see how he opened up? 
He didn't, he did not, he did not, he didn't come and say, Oh, you know, you remember me? I'm, I'm Prince Murphy. The, 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 the grandson of King Saul. I begin to speak King's language and assets. No, he just called himself the way he felt. And the king said, hmm. The king said to him, Then the king summoned Siba, Saul's steward, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything. Everything is at the table. Everything is at the table. Favor is at the table. Take your own. Take your own. Take your own. Prosperity is at the table. Take, take your own. Feasting is at the table. Take your own. Joy is at the table. Take your own. Fellowship is at the table. Take your own. Pleasure at the right hand of the Father is at the table. Take your own. But you, do you know how you position yourself into this uh, palace grace? Number one. As I'm running up, have kinship mentality. The way a man thinks, the way he is, is the scripture that says it. I told you about myself, 18 years old, I was. And I look around in my village. I said, I don't, I don't look like this. this is where I'm gonna be. This place doesn't look like where I wanna live. This life doesn't look like the life I wanna live. And I am living. And my father was like, where are you, do you think you are going to? I said, I don't know, but I am leaving this village. I go to everywhere except this place. And I left my village, 18 years old, without an address of where I'm going to. Even as of that time, I didn't know Christ. But a year later, I found Christ. And the message that was preached the day I know Christ, I still remember the title. Sinners, has sorrow. And I say, yes, I am a sinner. And my life has been sorrowful. Now I want a different life. And that was the beginning of my turning point. If there is anyone in the house today that want to have kinship mentality, that want to come into the palace grace, you have to give your life to Jesus. In truth and in the spirit. Children, give your life to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I give my life to you. I love you. And I will follow you. I begin to follow him. And he will never disappoint you. I say he will never disappoint you. Number two, don't be worldly. See, have you seen princes dressing like uh, street people? Do you see princesses dressing like harlots? That is why sometimes when I look at some people that say, I am a Christian. And they are dressed like people that are going around. I begin to have, ask questions. Are you truly a prince? Are you truly a princess? If you are a princess, there is a way you carry yourself. There is a way that you dress. There is a way that you walk. There is a way that you talk. Don't love the world. The way of the world is not the way of the princess. It's not the way of the prince. Worldliness is contrary to watchfulness. I quote our Sunday school. Uh, teacher this morning. Worldliness is contrary to watchfulness. So if you want to position yourself for the palace, please don't love the world. Love the world. You will not love W-O-R-L-D but you will love W-O-R-D. Do not love the world but love the word of God. And before you know what is happening, your life is transformed. Your life will be transformed. Five years old, that was when Mephibosheth became crippled. Emotionally, he was not there. He was wrecked. Physically, he was nobody to reckon with. Job-wise, inheritance-wise, he was gone. But I stand in this place of authority today. And as I bring the word of God to you, I want you to open up your spirit right now. Open up your heart and say, Jesus, I position myself. I leave my condition behind. I forget, I push back from this very moment, my situation. I step forward 
to position myself. I position my, myself in the grace that is in the palace, the grace of success. <clears throat> if you hear about successes in this church, to the glory of God, you know, people that are doing exams, medical doctors that are, they came from foreign country and they are doing exams and they are passing. And they are positioned already. They are becoming medical doctors even right here in Canada. Not one, not two, not three. In the space of how many years? That is God that is in the house. That is the grace that is in the house. Begin to tell God, Father, this is the situation. Father, this is my condition. Lord, change it. Change this situation. Change this condition. Turn it around for your glory, for your power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Ancient of Days. Father, Lord, myself, and your children, we come out, we make haste, we bow down before you, we worship you. Lord, coming forward to position ourselves at your table and every inheritance, every of the possession of this land that belongs to us, we take our position to possess them. We possess them to your glory, for your glory, for our blessings. In the name of Jesus, our children, will be sought after. They will be sought after. Our very self, oh God, Lord, you will open up your treasures and pour us your blessings upon our careers, for promotions, upon our businesses, for clients, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. The gospel of Jesus of Jesus' power, we go to the end of the world. In the name of Jesus, pray mothers we are bound and enlarge on all sides in the name of Jesus. The children of this church, Lord, divine ability, divine unique abilities will be deposited in them, O oh God, that they will be sought after in this land and beyond in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord of glory. Thank you, ancient of days. For in Jesus' victorious name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you all.